ഓമ ജ്ഞാനതിമിഗന്ധസ്യ ജ്ഞാനഞ്ജനശലാഖയ ചക്ഷൂരൻ മീലിതം യേന തസ്മൈ ശ്രീ ഗുരുവേ നമഃ ഹരി കൃഷ്ണ This very interesting observation Paritranaya sadhanam the supreme lord comes to deliver the devotee so this is probably is making a comment in connection with Bali Maharaj so it appears that he came to smash Bali Maharaj that was the external function of his coming was to take away everything from Bali Maharaj and give everything to Indra but actually paritra that means to uplift or to save or to deliver completely deliver pari means in prefix pari means completely in all ways from all angles of vision so actually he delivered bali maharaj although it appeared that he came to smash him but he delivered him from his material attachments and delivered him back to godhead so here also parikshit maharaj he had heard of the matsya avatar so he knew that he must have come in relation to some devotee factually all these stories of the different incarnations we're hearing here in bhagavatam and being described here uttama shloka charitam sarva loka sukhavaham all the descriptions of the incarnations of the lord they are for giving pleasure to all the inhabitants of all the planets so hearing about that simply to hear about it is enlivening so In the Bhagavatam we hear the stories of so many different incarnations Narasimha Krishna Garbha Varaha Dev So in each case it's not simply that the Lord is coming and doing something but he's intimately connected with his devotees Narasimha Dev you can't think of Narasimha without thinking of Prahla and Krishna Garbha came to deliver Dhruva Maharaj in the case of Gajendra we know the name of Gajendra even more than the particular form of the Lord who came to deliver him so which devotee Varaha that's also an incarnation which devotee did he deliver he delivered the earth who is also his devotee the earth is not simply some lump to be drilled and plowed and exploited but she's also a person bhu shakti that is the the internal potency of the lord is represented in this material world as bhumi devi the earth planet she's a person so parikshit maharaj was wondering about matsya avatar which devotee did he come to deliver who is that fortunate devotee who matsya avatar came to have his past time so that we will find out within this narration about satyavata muni who is the devotee who was particularly connected with and favored by matsya avatar now another point is you see here uttama shloka charitam sarva loka sukhavaham hearing about the supreme lord in his different incarnation in different incarnations give pleasure to all the inhabitants of the different planets but about the form of a fish he uh, purikshit maharaj is saying as a tama prakriti durmasham karma grasta yaveshwara that the form of a fish is tama prakriti it is of the lowest mode of nature loka jagupsitam it is condemned within the world it's the most condemned form you see sometimes great sages they curse others to fall to a lower species just like gotam rishi cursed his wife ahalya so apparently that she became a stone or and the versions of ramayana also cursed it 
Or we find, who is that? In the, in the ninth canto of Bhagavatam, it's described one king, he had to become a woman. So this is lower position. It's considered according to the karmic scale. So how is that? That the form of a fish, tamaprakuti duramarsham, is condemned within this world as being a very lowly species. It's something you might get cursed, or you might fall into as a result of sinful activity, like Driga Maharaj, for his one mistake, which apparently wasn't a very big mistake, but he, he had to suffer. Tamaprakuti, the form of a lizard. So, how is it that the Supreme Lord is, under, is in the form of a fish? And of course, he's answering the question. Karma Grasta himself, Parikshit Maharaj is asking. Karma Grasta Iveshwar. Karma Grasta Iva. Karma Grasta, Grasta means a swallow, overcome by. It appears that Karma Grasta Iva means apparently, but not actually. Apparently, he is suffering the sinful reactions of having to appear in the body of a fish. But he is Ishvara. He's still the Supreme Lord. He's not actually under the modes of material nature. Only appears like that. He's just like Krishna. The people, they have so many funny ideas, wrong ideas about Krishna. Just like they may say that, well, Krishna, he had, to, he had to suffer some sinful reaction. Sometimes they make some theory like this. That because Ramchandra killed Vali in a wrong way by shooting him from behind. So he, Krishna, in his next form, he was also killed by the hunter, by the arrow. Sometimes you hear these horrible theories. I actually heard this from a Pujarya Dwarka. And wait to work. That's right. So because of these sinful, sinful reaction. So people, materialistic people, they misunderstand Krishna. They cannot understand Krishna. But although he's in the form of a fish, which appears to be a form of great suffering, Uttama Shloka Charitam Sarva Loka Sukhavaham. By hearing about this fish, the whole world, which is full of misery, can become blissful. So that's the difference. Everyone in this material world is suffering. Not just that the fish is suffering. The uh, karma kandis, they think there is certain kind of enjoyer of this material world. We can say they're sophisticated enjoyers of this material world. Nowadays you don't see, but in followers of the Vedic system, they think that, well, in this material world, Undoubtedly there is misery, but there's also enjoyment. So let us act in such a way that we can always enjoy. Because even though a young woman grows old and is no longer attractive, there will always be some young women, there's always some coming along. So uh, let us, we may have to go to, if we go to the heavenly planets, we may have to come back again, but we can do more sacrifice and we can again go to the heavenly planets and enjoy. So let us act in let us act in such a way, we will act piously, and then we shall enjoy. And undoubtedly we may perform sinful activities, even unknowingly, but we shall perform sacrifices and we will perform some penances. And this will we will give charity in holy places, and in this way we will nullify our sinful reactions, and we will continue to enjoy this material world ad infinitum. Of course, it's not a very good theory because by the very nature of this material world is that even without your knowing or desiring, there may be some mistake. Like Nriga Maharaj, he only wanted to perform pious activities, but by mistake he performed a sinful activity by which he had to suffer in a hellish condition in the body of a lizard. And another mistake with this theory is that as long as we have the enjoying spirit, then uh, we are subject to fall into the lower modes of material nature because the enjoying spirit, let me, I will perform pious activities and I will enjoy in the heavenly planets. But the very mode of enjoyment is such that it, it covers our knowledge 
and even though we may have performed pious activities, because of the enjoying mood, then we'll, that will compel us to perform impious activities, like this uh, money griever, what is it, Nalukuvera money griever. They, by pious activities they were elevated to the heavenly planets. But then they were performing the impious activities of spotting naked in the worshipable Mandakini river. And even when and being intoxicated, and even when they saw Narad Muni, they had no sense of self-restraint. You know, they performed pious activities to go to the heavenly planets, but they'd lost their intelligence due to their enjoying spirit. What is that horrible noise? Is someone demonstrating this misery of the material world for us? <laughs> we don't need a... We don't need, we will, but better we hear about it from Shastra rather than hear the... It's the uh, early morning, early for him, whoever it is. Early morning coughing, cleaning out the mucus. So, uh, anyway, this idea, uh, we shall go on enjoying this material world, is not possible. This material world is simply a place of suffering. That is the first thing to be understood. That this, if anyone is at all to make advancement in spiritual life, the first thing he has to understand is that this material world, it is not a place of enjoyment. It is simply a place of suffering. And whatever adjustments you make, this way, that way, let me get... You, you see these advertisements. The happy man standing with the wife looking at him. That now I've got life insurance. Now everything is wonderful. My wife respects me because I got life insurance. That's a, even if I die and I can't bring in money for her, the insurance company will give money to her. So what a wonderful husband I am. Oh, that advertisement used to be on the back of the uh, the trains at a glance. The, the husband and wife standing with their baby and their scooter looking miserable. Saying that we have all the good things of life. VCR, two-wheeler, but we don't have our own home. Never mind, the advertisement says, we'll give you a loan. Then you can work like an ass for the rest of your life, paying it off at a high interest. So, this material world is full of suffering. You're always thinking, if only I had this, if only I had something else. I remember as, uh, in, as a child reading, there's this newspaper in England which all the rich people read, called the Daily Telegraph. So they're having uh, Christmas gifts, they're advertising what you can buy. So rich people buy this newspaper. So what are you going to give a rich person for a gift? Because they already got everything. So they're advertising, this is the ideal gift for someone who already has everything. <laughs> A belly, <laughs> a belly button cleaner. <laughs> you know the, this. What do you call this? This nabi, this thing here. Neighbor here. Well, this something to clean. <laughs> so the person there, uh, yeah, he's opening his gifts. Ah, it's a gold ring with a gold bracelet with uh, diamonds already worth worth. 200,000 pounds. I already got 50 of them. That's a useless gift. Ah. What's the next thing? Ah. A belly button cleaner. Ah. That's great. Now I can really be happy. That's what my life was missing. I had everything in the world. 50 houses and 200 cars. I was wondering why I was miserable and this is the answer. Now I've got a belly button cleaner. Now my life is going to be perfect. So happily cleaning it <laughs> belly button. Ah, this is wonderful. But then after some time you find that however clean my belly button is, I'm still miserable. Well, I have to wait till next Christmas to find if they can give me some gift which I never thought of. Then I can be happy. But anyway, the actual fact is that even if you have a belly button cleaner in every one of your hundred homes, and you even keep an extra one in every one of your 200 cars. So when you're driving between your car, your homes, 
if you feel a sudden urge to clean your belly button. Never mind, it's already there. The cleaner is there. But uh, it doesn't matter. You still have to die. You still have to suffer. So that is the nature of this material world. You see, even Indra, if he has the best eye lotion, you see, he has so many eyes. So sometimes he sometimes has to clean his eyes with his droppers. So even if he has the... It may take some time to clean all his eyes. So even if he has the best eye lotion, Indra's eye lotion, you see, he can clean his... How many eyes? Thousand eyes. He can clean his th- thousand eyes with... The, new fantastic eye lotion which will make him see even better from his one thousand eyes all over his body. But still, even Indra, he's suffering. He's in anxiety. He has to die. He can't remain Indra forever. See, this is the mistake of the materialists. They think we'll go to heaven by the Sacrificial process. Taper stuff is stage. So, uh, but you have to come back again here. And even when you're there, you're suffering. You're not happy. So the first thing to understand in spiritual life is that there is nothing can make me happy because the very nature of this material world is suffering. It's not that, you see, in India previously they thought our country is poor. Let us become rich like America. Then we will be happy. So there's some fallacies here. The first fallacy is that people in America are not happy. Which people in India, they never believe it until they go to America. If they go to America. No one believes it. Do you believe it, Gornitai? Not really. Not really. They must be happy in America because they have lots of money and nice cars and homes and you must be happy but they're not happy and no one believes me so what should we do send them let us go to America then we will find out we'll arrange your visa that you can do you go to America work like an ass that's the condition in America working, working, working you won't be happy here also you're not happy here even you see big rich men I saw in uh, Calcutta airport the advertisement for one magazine Business India so they had the names of all the they had pictures of all the famous businessmen in India among whom one I recognize means household name at least among businessmen he's a one supporter from Ahmedabad, soap manufacturer, I won't say his name. So, we see him from time to time. He's got lots of money, even though he's only semi-literate, he's from a village background. But he's got lots of money. But he's not happy. I, I, I mean, if you see his face, he's not like he's beaming in ecstasy. He doesn't come dancing down the road. Always look of anxiety. Definitely there must be anxiety. There's so many factories. And any time your business can go... Just like we, one of our devotees in Bombay, by the well-known name of Mavatlal, household name, his huge business is now... collapsed. So, everyone's in anxiety. Anytime your business can collapse. You see, when there was India-Pakistan war, the last one was in 1971, and all the businessmen were giving money, huge donations to the government for the war effort. Let us smash Pakistan, because they're afraid. If Pakistan comes in, then all our business establishments, everything will, at least under this government we know, we have some stability. But if the if Pakistanis come in, then what will be our future? So full of anxiety. They're always in anxiety. Pakistan may come. Indra is also in anxiety. But Bali Maharaj may come. So where is the happiness? And even uh, 
You see, in America, people are so rich. And anytime anyone can just shoot in Bombay also. It's a common thing. Big, big businessman driving in his Mercedes. Some kids, college kids, come up on a scooter beside him and shoot him at the stockman. They get maybe 5,000 rupees each to spend on drugs or whatever. Common. In Bombay, it's very common. Big, big businessman. Now that Ashok Jain, big businessman, now his Ashok is turning to Shok because he's about to die. <coughs> about to die. It seems like that. He's in critical condition. So where is the happiness? First thing we should understand. This very basic point. This material world is full of suffering. Don't believe it. That you can be happy in this material world. You see people going to parties, and especially young people, with a lot of vigor and energy, and wow, this is wonderful, a kind of euphoria. And you see their parents, they were doing the same thing 20 years ago. No. <laughs> Worn out. That's material life. Even the parties, they're so, ah, wonderful. But they're also full of anxiety. Young people, it looks like they're full of happiness. If they're going to parties and mixing up boyfriend, girlfriend, they're full of anxiety. They, only they have to show outside, I'm very happy. But they're always thinking, the boy is thinking, what are the girls thinking of me? And they're very afraid that they'll say something, some bad comment, and vice versa. You see the girls, especially the girls, they, you see they're all painted up, they've got some cosmetics for their eyebrows and for their eyelashes and some powder and cream for their face and their hair is so many different hairstyles and something for their lips and for their for their nails. Nail is simply stool. That's it's simply some byproduct of it. But they're very careful to paint it. So much effort they make. And they're just hoping someone will think, Oh, how beautiful. And if someone says, Oh, look at that. Ugh. Then, uh, oh, oh, sorry. They're just so much in anxiety. And their whole uh, happiness and distress is simply if someone thinks their body will look nice. But after some time, however much you paint it, it's not going to look nice. You take any 70 year old woman, it doesn't matter what you do. Whatever, you can put all the perfume in the world. Just, you know, put one kilo of lipstick. It doesn't look nice. So then they're lamenting. That Shankaracharya says. The old man is simply lamenting. How I've wasted my life. So this is the nature of material happiness. It may seem, even if it seems like happiness, it's always mixed with distress. And, it all, and if we pursue the path of material happiness, it always it, it complicates us in more and more distress. It's a very great illusion. The, the, the illusion on which the whole world is going, that we can be happy in this material world. So the form of a fish is described here as being particularly full of suffering. But that doesn't mean that other forms are not suffering. Every form of life, every person in this material world is full of suffering. But it is the social behavior of human society that we're not supposed to, sh we're supposed to look happy. We're supposed to put a, a brave face. In England, they say, put a brave face on it. In other words, as you look brave. Someone told, I remember another memory from my hellish existence prior to coming to this Krishna conscious movement. Someone telling me that what is the goal of life? So I, said, I want to die with a smile on my face. And a smile on your face and as Yamaraj comes. You won't be smiling very long. In other words, to show that yes, I emerged, I was victorious over the, in the struggle for material life. I'm dying with a smile. I'm happy. My life was successful. Yeah, foolishness. You're dying with a smile on your face, maybe. But where are you going? 
So it's a very basic point we should clearly understand. There's no happiness in this material world. The only happiness is given here. Uttama shloka charitam sarva loka subhavaham. What can give happiness? Hearing about Krishna, being Krishna conscious. There is no other happiness. Nothing, nothing. Anything else is simply concoction that we can be happy in this material world. Therefore, we should mold our life according to Guru, Sadhu and Shastra who give us the direction how we can be happy. Not, you see, now in our movement it's become fashionable. There's always some kind of silly fashion going on. One after the other. And then they find out that it's not actually full of bliss. So they try something else. So the latest thing is psychology, sociology, mundane morality. You know, let's be nice and, you know, we have to see what the psychologists say. It's all bakwas, nonsense, all useless. The psychologists cannot help you. They cannot even help themselves. Guru, sadhu, shastra, they can help. Hearing about Krishna. You're mentally, you're mentally imbalanced and disturbed. Welcome to the material world. Everyone here is like that. That is the very nature of this material world. Everyone here is crazy. They're all disturbed. Especially in Kali Yuga, that is the very symptom of Kali Yuga. Everyone is disturbed. So that is analyzed in Shastra. The sages at Naimisharanya, they said, what is that? Prayana alpayasa sabya kalava svinyuge janaha mandasu manda matayo manda bhagya yubhuduta. They analyze what are the symptoms of Kali Yuga. Everyone is short lived. Everyone is uh, perverted consciousness. Everyone is unlucky. And particularly, everyone's mind is disturbed. So they wanted to hear from Sutta Goswami what is it? What does the Shastra recommend to overcome this condition? They didn't ask, what do the psychologists recommend? What do the sociologists recommend? They want to know, what does the Shastra recommend? What is the best means? So that, Sutta Goswami explained, Dharmasvanushtita, not that one. Savai pum sang paro dharma yato bhakti dhoksha jay ahaitoki apratihata yayatma suprasidati that which can actually satisfy us. In this material world there's no happiness, there's no satisfaction. And what can satisfy us is the topmost religious process which means un- unmotivated and uninterrupted devotional service to the transcendent law. No mundane religion. Nothing mundane. You have to come to the transcendental platform, Uttama Shloka, hearing about Uttama Shloka. No mundane adjustment. That is the mistake of the materialists. They think, well, now your mind is very disturbed, so it's because of this, 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 that, because in your childhood your father shouted at you and your mother threw things at you and your brother beat you up and therefore you have to make some mental adjustment. But that's not the root cause. That may be the interim cause. But the root cause of the problem is that we are envious of Krishna. This is real psychology. Envious of Krishna, therefore we have performed sinful activities in millions of lives. Therefore our consciousness is perverted. And it's still perverted as long as we have the enjoying spirit. That we enjoy this material world. So that has to be changed. And then it doesn't matter whatever your brother threw at you or Whatever it may be, there are so many causes of distress and there are continuing causes of distress. Just like Prabhupada, he discussed this, that Freud, see this is all Freudian psychology. Freud said that in your previous, previous in your life you had some shock, some difficulty and therefore you're mentally warped. So you have to straighten that out and then you're all right. And Prabhupada said that, well what's the guarantee you won't get another shock? This material world is full of shocks. There's always something horrible going there's, a, there's always someone doing something or saying something which disturbs you. Adhyatmic pledge. Other people are always giving you harm. 
So the, the true solution to our problems that is seen by all sages. What is that verse? The, the great sages have concluded that the I'm not remembering the Sanskrit. The great sages they have concluded that the only means to mitigate material miseries is to hear about and serve Lord Sri Hari. Parikshit Maharaj is convinced of this, therefore he's inquiring from Shukadev Goswami, who is the proper authority to explain these things. Hare Krishna. Is there any question? The incarnations of the Lord, do they exist in the spiritual world? Some of them do, some of them don't. Some of them are only manifested in the material world. And many of them are in the spiritual world also. Matsya Avatar, I don't know. I haven't seen any such information that there is in the spiritual world, Matsya Avatar. Matsya, do I, is there any temple? I don't know of any temple of Matsya. In Kanchi maybe, I don't remember seeing. Now in Kanchi there's Vaman, very big Vaman deity. And Kurma, the only temple I know is that that's in uh, Kurma Kshetra. Near Sri Kakula in Andhra Pradesh. So there are followers of Kurma Rupa. Hmm. Matsya, I don't know. I can find out if you remind me. I'll put out a query. I've never seen. May, maybe among the Divya Deshams of the Ramanuja Sampradaya. Maybe at. Uh, anyway, this is only speaking But at Kanchi, you'll find it. Some of the temples. But among these Sri Vaishnavas, they, uh, they worship different forms of the Lord. They are particularly worshippers of Lord Vishnu. Hmm. You speak a little louder. Yeah. So what's the question? I can't say because I'm, I didn't read about Matsya Avatar in the spiritual world. There may be, but the point is that anyway, Matsya, he's uh, Lord Vishnu, particular pastime form of the Lord. There's some form, just like Mohini Murti is said, is not in the spiritual world. <coughs> there is no happiness in this world. No. What, what for Krishna created this world? So that we can... Why did Krishna create this world if there is no happiness? So that those who are more intelligent can realize there is no happiness and seek their eternal happiness in the spiritual world. This material world is here because we desire to be happy separately from Krishna, which is not possible. But to give us the opportunity to indulge in that illusion, Krishna has made this material world. But it's a, the root reason why we can't be happy in this material world is because our true relationship is with Krishna. and We can't be happy separate from Krishna, whatever we do. Just like if you take a fish out of water, then whatever, you may give a fish a million dollars and a Rolls Royce car and the fish can never be happy. He needs to be in his natural situation in the water. 
then he feels comfortable. So similarly, as long as we're not in the atmosphere of the spiritual world where we're engaged in the service of Krishna, we cannot be happy. It's not possible. We're, we're in an unnatural position. Yeah. The materialistic activities, some of them are absolutely necessary. Like say, defense of India, I was studying all that. Feeling that then, uh, how is the world to get managed? So everything will be collapsed. The farmers will away farming, the students will be away uh, studying. This junking is uh, maybe necessary to this, of course, because you won't find happiness. But uh, materialistic activities, if it is taken as a prashadam, then isn't it there? Uh, Has anyone ever recommended that farming be stopped? No, I'm just saying materialistic like this. Right, I mean, any, any of them. Like uh, marriages or any... In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, tam abhyacha siddhing vinditi manavaha By worshipping Him, the Supreme Lord, through the performance of one's work, every person can achieve success. So which activities are absolutely necessary? That we have to see. At the present time, the, the, the whole society is set up with many artificial necessities. It means they're not actually necessities, but we've made them necessities, just like you're saying, study. Now, to get a job or whatever, it's, it's considered that you need to get some, some kind of degree. But actually, as the election slogans used to go, our necessities are roti kapra makam, which uh, can be produced very simply even without degrees. But because we've made an artificial society in which people, they need to have mass transit systems, they need to crowd into buses and trains so they can get to work. Whereas previously people, they, they would live on the land and their, their, their field would be next to their home. So we didn't need a mass transit system. And we didn't need to study so many complex things because life was very simple. Although there was study, there was study of Shastra, which is not this philosophy, it's not for intellectually weak people, it's a deep subject. But the intellectual focus was on understanding the absolute truth. So work was there, but this exacerbation of activities, creating more and more products, this grossly materialistic society has made it artificially necessary to have all these things. Now, defense also, that's become grossly exacerbated. That now we need to have nuclear bombs and so many different things. So that's also required in society. Due to the demoniac state of society, there's massive over-militarization in which even poor countries, they feel it necessary to spend a huge amount of their budget on weapons. So there's a very great imbalance in society due to lack of philosophical understanding, that life is meant for understanding God. Therefore, a, a, a broader aim of the Krishna conscious movement is not simply to have a few temples where a few people chant Hare Krishna, but to actually revive God consciousness in human society and change the whole mode of life, which is artificial. How long can it last? Our modern society is based on oil, but uh, oil reserves are limited. So how long can it go on? It's also based on exploitation, that 10% of the world's population uses 90% of its resources. That means that 90% of the world's people, they're, they're working and living at a lower standard of living, so that 10% of the world can live at a higher, so-called higher standard of living. So it's grossly imbalanced. We don't say not to work, but we should work in a sense of God consciousness. We should know what the ultimate goal of life is. We'll finish there. Hare Krishna.